<clears throat> Hi there, David Thompson here from Facebook Spaces, uh, which if you don't know, <clears throat> well, obviously is a virtual reality world. It's an application which came with my Oculus headset, which I'm in real life I'm, I'm wearing in my office just now, just outside Hamburg in Germany. Um, and basically <clears throat> it's a, an application which allows you to um, be in a space like this. This is actually a 360 photograph um, from the Regis <coughs> Hotel chain. So it's just a spherical photograph here. Um, it allows me to have an avatar, which kind of looks like me a little bit. Um, as you can see, my mouth moves when I speak and my eyes, uh, as you'll see later, they kind of follow things around that are in my field of vision. So it's kind of an interesting application. I'm going to use it today to explain to you a little bit about augmented and virtual reality technology, uh, where it is today, um, really as an experiment. And uh, we'll see how you like these videos and if I should do some more explanation videos using virtual reality like this. So um, <clears throat> I have some tools here, which you, might, uh, you may be able to see there. I'm going to pick a black pen. So virtual reality today, um, <clears throat> well, Let's maybe go back a little bit in the past. Virtual reality, not that long ago, was about looking at 3D models in um, essentially in uh, as close to real scale as possible. And the way that we could do that in the past was basically by making a very large kind of parabolic screen like this, um, onto which we would project maybe with uh, three projectors an image that would cover the whole thing like this. So three projectors projecting our 3D model, so some pipes like this, equipments, pumps, the usual kind of things, steel girders, structure, all this kind of stuff onto the screen. And then uh, we would put human beings in front of this screen like this. And because the screen was so big, they would effectively feel like uh, they're inside this. So we're going to move the camera around here. So that's your panoramic virtual reality cave, um, which we actually had <clears throat> in the Cambridge office in, uh, back in 1997. It was called the Silicon Graphics Reality Center. Now that kind of setup obviously cost quite a lot of money. Um, three large barcode projectors, very large screen and a big silicon graphics uh, computer. Um, so I'm going to move this a little bit out of the way, take my audience. So that's virtual reality in the past. Uh, the goal of that was obviously to make um, the spectator feel like they were immersed in the graphics. And that's what we did with parabolic screens or what you sometimes refer to as uh, igloos, which is a complete a half hemisphere covering a group of people or a cave which might be three flat walls with uh, projection techniques to make it look like it's uh, all mapping together. Um, these days virtual reality we could say it's the second generation and it's the, the gamer generation of commercial virtual reality headsets. Nowadays what we have is essentially a box like this um, maybe it has a little bit of form like this and inside the box I'll use another color we have perhaps uh, two screens like this and I'll use a, a lighter color and then we have a couple of lenses like this, which are usually Fresnel, Fresnel I think, lenses. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, important is today that these things are typically connected by a cable to something. So right here you can see, well, maybe I have to connect together my, like this. All right, so this is 
a little model of a virtual reality headset. So a box um, with a, a bunch of sensors inside it so it can sense how it's moving around like this. Uh, usually they're for rotation, uh, yaw, these kind of around these axes. Um, the gray bits here are two small computer screens and this has come from mobile phone technology. Um, and then two lenses there because the screens are so close to the eyes, uh, we need the lenses to reproject that as if it's about three meters away, otherwise we wouldn't be able to focus on it. And of course I can simply wear this on my head. This is what the VR user looks like. They have the headset completely obscures their vision. Um, but because the headset has got sensors to detect how it's moving around, the image which is displayed on the two images will update according to the, the orientation of the user's head. So that's basically how uh, a simple VR headset works like um, uh, Gear VR or even a Google Cardboard, which is where you put your phone in, which displayed, provides the two displays. The lenses are built into the Google Cardboard. Um, <clears throat> these days we have more advanced headsets which don't just detect rotation around the three axes, they can also detect forwards and backwards movement, side to side movement, up and down. And to do that, we need separate sensors. So these sensors today uh, for Oculus basically look like a little camera like this on a stick, and a nice sort of round base. Um, <clears throat> and these sensors are kind of spraying out uh, infrared uh, or uh, some kind of mix of laser and they basically detect where the headset is so as you move around these sensors are shining on the headset from a distance usually and they're able to tell where the headset is so that's how <coughs> virtual reality works in the case of oculus or in the case of the HTC Vive uh, we actually have a nice little box like this uh, and inside the box we have something which is spraying out actually uh, kind of laser infrared so HTC Vive slightly different system two boxes so I think I can uh, duplicate this two boxes in the room that shine down on the user and these can be quite far apart nine meters we've tested it uh, and they track where the user's head is in VR. Uh, and then we have the, the latest generation of devices, which I need this for. Um, I'll take my pen again. Uh, go for dark gray. So the latest generation of headsets, they actually have a couple of simple cameras built into them. And those cameras are using a SLAM algorithm um, and they detect essentially um, through simple form of, of computer vision uh, all of the objects around. So they have about a five meter range, something approximately like that. They'll see your sofa, they'll see tables and things like that. And then through software, pure software, they're able to figure out essentially a 3D model of the room. And from reverse engineering the 3D version of the room, and the relative, they can work out the relative location of the headset and therefore work out those last three degrees of freedom that the accelerometers don't catch. So that's how VR works today. And then uh, I'll keep this video short and I'll come back and explain to you how uh, augmented reality works and some of the issues that we have with that in the future. <laughs>